ahead and bring in Steiner Sports CEO, Brandon this Steiner. One of the country's top this memorabilia mogul. I have an unbelievable guest, Brandon Steiner. Brandon's second to none. We all got tickets and more tickets. The question is, what are your tickets? Are they actually working for you? A good friend of mine, Troy Tutt from Ticket Manager, is here joining us. And and for the two obvious reasons. One, I got a lot of tickets, and I should be making sure those tickets are working for me. And, and he's got a phenomenal system in how to track your tickets to see if they're working. And also, it's been, Troy's been a friend of mine for a long time. This guy left a phenomenal career path and got entrepreneurial on me and went to a brand new startup. And I got to find out how, why. And at the same time, let's find out what this company, Ticketmaster, does. Yep. First of all, Troy, welcome. Love having you up here. It's been a while. It has been a while. How's I appreciate going? you having me. Well, you know, I, I just loved your story because you, you've been a, you know, you always had a great corporate path and a good vision. You know, Cleveland, mm -hmm. Yankees. All of a sudden, you got an entrepreneur on me. I mean, what drew you to this company, and how hard was that to, to leave such a good corporate path in sports to go do something entrepreneurial? Right. In some ways, it was very easy. In some ways, it was very difficult. Uh, one of the biggest things, you know, so I, I did the Cavaliers, and then I went Yankees, and then I headed headed south to Florida little, with little the PGA Tour. Little, little golf, yeah, 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 did golf. And I think the biggest thing that attracted me, there was a few. One was, I, I want to stay in sports, right? The entertainment space uh, is my love. You know, my passion is there. Uh, but I also saw where the world uh, is at that time, two and a half, three years ago, and certainly is today. That's where the, the world was going is, is towards technology, software, so on and so forth. And I want to be tied to that. And I also thought from my uh, perception is technology and software and growth within sports is lacking, right? I, I think across the board, whether it's on the team side, it's corporations. We're still using tickets. We're, we're still the using physical paper tickets, there's, right? There's some folks still which using tickets. Which is paper, absurd. Which is, and we, you and I could do a, we could do a podcast just on that someday if you want to. Because there's so many opportunities <laughs> now to start bundling and packaging. You should be able to walk into a stadium just with, just click, click, click. There's some empty seats down there, click. Yep. That's the idea. You know, all that stuff. That's the idea. And so, you know, so you know, what I enjoyed about making this transition, it was a difficult one. And was, you know, I, I picked up my family again, and my wife is an absolute saint. So how many times, yeah. I mean, you picked up your family yeah. again? I, I count four moves. Yeah, so I, I did my, my first move. first. Uh, so originally a Long Island boy, uh, but originally first job was Cleveland. Uh, I do remember back in 2002 opening up an atlas and having to see exactly where Cleveland was. I said, oh, it's on the lake. So my, that's, wife's that's a gonna, good my wife's going to have to <laughs> love me love me some for me to tell her moving from New York to Cleveland. Cle uh, Cleveland uh, gets <laughs> a bad just, rap. No, it I'm is, not, one of, I, it I is like a Cleveland. fantastic no, I don't city. Want, don't start tweeting at me, kill me out <laughs> Cleveland, but I've been to Cleveland, love Cleveland. Cleveland's but awesome. New York, Cleveland, I mean, it big is. adjustment it is more my point. Yeah, right? this, yeah I, you know, I wanted, this is my first job out of school, and I had a passion. I wanted to get into it, and I was actually talking talking about today the how crazy was the uh, small amount of money that I made and I didn't know anyone and my parents were shooting me down and uh, but I did it right that's probably one of the things I'm most proud of is that I just did it right I, I just I didn't really have anybody that was candidly encouraging me uh, I kind of just did it on my own and you know ended up being there eight years it was phenomenal uh, and then I had a fantastic opportunity to come to the Yankees uh, and so that's going from Cleveland semi back home to New York uh, fantastic run with the uh, Yankees is a year into the new stadium. Uh, so this was uh, high profile, high profile. Sure, yep. Uh, big logo, of course, recognizable. And then and, uh, and and a big, uh, you know, when you talk about premium tickets, suites, it's big. Yes, it was a, uh, a high dollar amount and it's fantastic clientele. So that probably yeah. stuck in your brain a little bit for the later on mm -hmm. because I always say, you know, what happens today, I guarantee is going to help you in some way later. Always. So you're probably looking at all these people spending all this money on tickets and probably not being able to track. Yeah, so, you know, through that process, you know, we'll work with organizations. I mean, there are seats, you know, at Yankee Stadium that you can set a set of four seats could be half a million dollars, right, right for a year. Right, uh, and that's the extreme, right? But you know, in premium seating, that's definitely you could have something that's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a regular basis for a set of four seats for corporations. And as you, as a business owner, we all—that's an asset you purchase. Now, is that asset driving business for you? And do you know that, <laughs> right? So you think most folks kind of do the, hey, it feels good, 
but they're not really sure. Yep, feels good. Our sales reps say, you know, customers like it. They seem to be happy. But do I have the quantifiable data in front of me to drive that decision making? For many companies, even today, the case is no, they don't have that data. But that's where we come into play. That's where Ticket Master comes in. No, it's Ticket, ticket Manager. Ma- manager. Ticket Manager? Yeah, yeah. I say Master? Master, so easy. Ticket you know, Manager. We, we, we're not helping ourselves. Because it is technically it that Ticket easy. Manager. Yeah. That's the, actually what you guys do. Right. Manage the tickets. Correct. But is it an app or is it a program? Is it a- It's a software. We're a SaaS, uh, SaaS platform, uh, and there's an app that's associated with it. And so the biggest thing here is we're allowing these corporations who invest millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, into client entertainment to make sure those assets get allocated and put in the right hands of their customers and then they can see the results and drive the results off of it i mean if you won't put it in a nutshell that's what it's all about and how though so, so give me you, an example yeah for an example uh you know one of the biggest challenges so, you know take any company what's what are they most likely doing with the tickets they're entertaining their clients okay who's entertaining the clients from their company Sales folks. Sa- yeah, sales VP, right. sales rep. Right. So first and foremost, are you making it easy on your sales folks to see what's available, get the tickets in their hands, so on and so forth? For many companies, that's a headache. They send an email to somebody. Maybe they reply back in an hour. Maybe it's a day. Maybe it's two days, right? Then it's, oh, do you need parking? Do you need this? What's the business reason for it? What's the business justification? And it becomes a headache. So if something's a headache for our salespeople, what do they end up doing? They end up not doing it. Sprinting away from it. Exactly. So you're saying your platform, I can take all the tickets that I have company wide, and now they're on a platform for everybody to see. So it doesn't mean you're getting them, but it means at least you can see what's available. Yep, and you have all the controls to be able to see internally at your organization who can see them, make a request, put in the like business that. justification for it. And so then you streamline the process. So if you have a sales guy that reports to Mary, Right, then you can go to Mary for sign off as soon as Mary hits one button, it automatically goes to the person who fulfills them. We integrate with Ticketmaster, right, and other ticketing systems so you can easily deliver the tickets. We'll tie into uh, CRM systems like a Salesforce or Microsoft Dynamics so you can tie right directly into the opportunity. So then what do you get out of that? You get an ROI, right? Well, I can see who got all the tickets for the year. Then I can start correlating, I guess, who got the tickets versus whether the sales went up or whether we got new business. Yep. And is that, what, is that the game? A, that's so exactly. I'm going to get a report on my desk with 200 people that got these beautiful tickets mm-hmm. down in the Legends, let's say, for mm-hmm. Yankee Stadium. Sure. And I can start looking at those accounts and see if that had any kind of effect. Yeah, right. well, where are you seeing that? If it has, work? maybe I may want to get more Legends. Yeah, well, I mean, companies, or, you can right? do these so, course. Some people are thinking, how do I cut down on tickets? But in some cases, you may need to increase. You don't even know. That's 100%. Right? You're, you're right. And so that's what we're doing. Like, you know, you, the sports world has almost challenged ourselves in which we've created everything towards this value for a ticket, right? And so when a ticket doesn't get used, there becomes this heartache and this pain for that customer that they say, oh, it didn't get used. Well, let's look at something that's similar in client entertainment. Let's say golfing. How often when people are looking at their country club membership, do they say, how many days did I not play a foursome? Probably rarely. Right? What do they normally look at? Okay, the people when I do get them out there, who are these clients? Who am I getting out in the golf course that I normally couldn't get them to a dinner or anything else uh, otherwise? So does your program track golf foursomes? Yeah, so we... Because so we, uh, that's something like a lot of people do. and That's exactly what we do. So about two, two and a half years ago, uh, you'll hear the product of our company is called Invite Manager. So our companies came to us, and keep in mind, our, our clientele is... Nissan and American Express and MasterCard and Wells Fargo and Anheuser-Busch and right on down the line. So we have some of the biggest organizations out there. And so they said, you know what, your software is fantastic for tickets, but what about, that's a, a piece of the pie. That could be 25%, that could be 90%, but that's just a piece of the pie. What about when I'm doing the golf outings and the fishing trips and the cocktail parties? Or so you, dinner. Or dinner. So now you can do that within our software as well, so you can easily track the results and you know make sure, once again, that's an asset that you want to drive to the right individuals. Any particular, is there a case study that comes to mind, somebody who's had some success with this that you can talk about or they can... Yeah, no, yeah we have a lot of case studies. And that's the thing that we're, we're I think... The product works so well, uh, and we take a lot of passion in the service side, and so we build a lot of close relationships with our customers. But, you know, you can take folks like a CDW who's based out of uh, Chicago, and you know they had tickets all over the place on Excel spreadsheets, and there That's wasn't crazy, a lot man. of allocation. It's like a no-brainer. Yep. But back to the entrepreneurial yeah. thing for a second. Please. Like, how how hard you've seen been now? You've been with this company almost since the inception. Uh, no, not not necessarily. So we've been around ten, ten, ten years. We've been around as an organization. I've been on on the team for about two and a half. What's the what, now? The things I could see starting to take off now more mm-hmm. than ever. 
what's what was the what, what was the hardest part of that transition? Because a lot of people out there have ideas, but how do you, what, what was the main push? What was it? Was it persistence? Was it cash? Was it investors? Was it support? The big client? Yeah. So uh, and you know some of our Tony Knopp, who's our CEO, and some of our other co-founders like Joe Griner, could probably speak to those early days. And trust me, there were really tough early days. Oh yeah. Uh, and you know I came afterwards, so I've seen a lot more sunshine than than uh, than clouds, but. You know, during those early days, it was you know getting that first client was a, was a big win, right? And so I think just like anything else, and especially within the software world, especially when you're looking at, we're very much a um, an MRR or ARR base, so monthly recurring revenue or annual recurring revenue. So a lot of metrics out there from ARR as far as when you get to certain thresholds, then how you can scale the business, right? As far as how you start bringing in different type of leadership and where you start putting resources, taking that money from investors and where you invest it. And you know, I think. Once we got to there was a um, there was a, a large investment that we received uh, back in 2015 under 2015. That's one of the main reasons I came on board was at that time to help scale out our sales team and we were opening up uh, additional offices and so on and so forth. And that was a big big win for us. Uh, we are we are a sales organization. We have 15 tenants within our organization. Number 12 is. We are a sales organization. You're either selling or you're supporting sales. So it is, it is not something that with some organizations there's a battle, right? Why do salespeople get commissions and all the best things? For us, we say, hey, we're we, we're all selling in some form or way. You know, we're all selling. And so I think having that clear defining um, tenant within our 15 tenants, we know where our marching orders and where we focus on. And so we also keep put clients, a, get clients, yeah, I mean, service we, clients. We literally renew over 99% of our clients. Because once people get going on it, they realize how much time they're saving, money, you know, the return. Yep. It's obvious. Because most people looking at ticket, they're looking at, you know, the ticket thing is, is an extra. Yep. As opposed to really an investment. Right. I guess that best way in, to. Uh, in some cases, they do, right? And I think that's where especially when you look at uh, bigger sponsorship deals, right? So it could be a large beverage or the car deal or whatever it might be, the automotive uh, space, and they may invest in a sponsorship and then tickets are almost thrown in, right, to your point. Or that's the way it's perceived. Perceived, right, but right? it's not really thrown in. There's a real cost so to There's that. a real cost on both sides, right? There's right. a real cost on it. And so, and you'll have some of these sponsorship deals, let's just call it a, a million dollar sponsorship deal, and you have a hundred thousand dollars is in the ticketing side. Everything for the nine hundred thousand on the sponsorship side could be going well. Well, if the hundred thousand on the ticket side is not going well, that could tie up the whole uh, renewal, right? They're just saying, hey, we're not seeing a return here. We're having made nobody wants that, right? And so that's a little bit where we also partner with sports teams to get our product in the hands of their clients because if. The team's clients well, are happy? Like some people may not even be offering their best clients the tickets. It just may not be clicking. That, Correct. that person handling that account has the headache. It's a hassle or there's too much clutter in between. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're a niche product, right? There's, you know, you say CRM, you know, 90% of the people watching this right now know if I say CRM, they're saying SAP and Oracle and Salesforce and Dynamics and so on and so forth. When you talk about what we do, which is asset allocation around client entertainment, they're like, hmm, right? Yeah. I, Tell me more about that, right? So this is, when we bring it up to folks, when it comes to selling, you're selling the product, but before you even do anything, you're educating them. Yeah. Right, on, hey, this there's a new way here, and most of them are, most, I mean, we'll have Fortune 100 companies with over 100,000 tickets, and they'll be tracking everything on Excel spreadsheets. Wow, that's a lot of tickets. And emails flying all over the place. <laughs> How expensive is something like this? I mean, is this uh, for big companies or is this, if you're a small company, can you afford this? Yeah, I think the challenge is... Is there a minimum amount of tickets you would need to kind of get in this game? Uh, not necessarily. I would say most of our customers are at least hitting a 1,000 tickets or so. Um, but we'll, we'll work with regional organizations, law firms that may have a suite at you know one team and a set of four seats at another. Are teams that, offering mm -hmm. this, this service as part of like, you know, if, let's say I have a spot Sponsorship and I'm getting, you know, a couple thousand tickets, yep. which is very doable, especially right. a, a sponsor of a league. Are, are leagues looking to say, hey, by the way, we're going to give you this uh, program as part of it, and then the league picking up the bill? Yeah. So we we partner. We don't do it on the league side yet, okay. uh, but we do it on individual team side and venues. So we actually have over a hundred. Uh, partnerships with sports teams across wow. the country. Uh, some local folks, Prudential Center, uh, Barclay Center, as an example, uh, are organizations that we'll partner with. And what they're looking for is exactly where you're going, Brandon, which is, hey, I want to get this tool in the hands of my customers because that means they're going to utilize
guys have better utilization. They're going to see the ROI. They're going to be happier customers. And I can either renew them at a better rate or expand them. They'll be appreciate, uh, right. more appreciative of it. You being out there a bunch, what's next out there? There's so many things going on in sports. You know, and people always, have we had, I was at a meeting the other day and someone said that, you know, we've hit, we've hit a, you know, sports in the next five years is going to blow up and we've gone because of the media situation is, it's hit a limit. It's going to be going backwards and it's, it's at its height. What's new out there? What's your feeling of the environment and, and your, yeah. your take? Uh, I don't know the the context of that that comment. It was a study. It was a guy. It was a study up in you. A guy who did the study. I don't know if you remember the uh, the Shilton polls. Was it for ESPN? Or okay. ESPN polls. And he had all this data and all this research. Mm-hmm. He was basically saying that, you know, basically that the the media has hit a hit a hit a, a height. It's not going to go any further. Yeah, I, I, from a media standpoint, I can't speak to that. I can tell you from a sports technology standpoint, there's a, there, lot. There's a lot going on. Right. You ticket. Like I said, we could spend a whole. We have a whole conversation because the, the ticket, ticket is. So imagine if you were able to put something in someone's hand as often as a team puts a ticket in your hand or Correct. on your phone, and I don't know if we're using it enough to well, that, do a million it's things. A, this is our lives, yeah. right? Uh, I don't. To me, I I I spend more on this than um, unfortunately I should, right? And so it it drives a lot of what I do, and but it also what does it also provide? It provides data, and I think that's the biggest thing that sometimes uh, folks forget about software. Uh, and technology is the amount of data that this thing has on me, right? So if I told, if I let's go back 15 years ago, and I said, Brandon, there's going to be an organization out there that's going to know what time you wake up, every meeting you have, who you talk to, when you talk to them, right? Every every calendar, all the meet, so on and so forth. You'd say, I'm calling the cops, right? So that's this. Not only do we allow them to have it, but we actually pay them to take our data. Right? Why do they do that? Because we make they make it so convenient for us. That's our world as well. We're making it so convenient for these organizations and these corporations to make sure their assets are allocated properly. Then there's data that's flowing through. Now, the good news about it, that's their data, right? So we're just we're just taking that data and flipping it back to them and saying, hey, now you have more data on your customers and your business and your sales to help you drive your decision making. Because the ticket business is big business. I don't know if people realize the amount mm-hmm. of tickets that all these companies get yep. with sponsorships. Mm-hmm. And by the way, when you commercials, mm-hmm. you know, the, the networks are giving you tickets, right? Yep. And then you're getting tickets just generally outright, you know, premium tickets. Mm-hmm. You're just buying part yep. of clubs, part of this, part of that. It's probably a big number considering it used to be such a small number when I got in this business. Yeah, it's, it's it, a teeny little number, and you only spent a lot because if your team went to the World Series, right. then you found a broker and you, you paid them a ton of money. Well, the the world, and you know, some of it goes obviously with the market, but if you go back to let's call it the early '90s, I was you know this was before my Cleveland days, but going off of a building that was built in the early '90s, same with the the Browns were at the same time, and then uh, Progressive Field, which was Jacobs Field at the time. They're loaded with suites. Each one of those stadiums, they're yeah. all built because that was the thing. Then is just to buy suites. Nobody really thought about it. It was a good money grab. You know, you got a lump sum. Now you go come to two hundred events a year or whatever it yeah. is, and you know, and you'd, and you'd have these organizations in a mid market like Cleveland that would have a suite at all three venues. Yep. This day and age, that's not that's not very common, especially if you're in a mid market, right? Maybe here in New York is a little different, but in a mid market, they're not doing that. Why? Because now, now we haven't even gotten into think about all the new tax laws, right? GRP, everything else that's going on, the accountability uh, and the compliance around uh, different industries on what they're doing with their clients and their spend. There's regulation and employees. Exactly. I think that regulation is going to change. By the way, it's interesting to see what yeah. happens because we did a whole, we did uh, our partners KPMG are fantastic. We did a whole case study with them, uh, and we went through every single question that either corporations had. We also got with the teams feedback from them that they had to answer those que- questions. Go on the case study, and some folks actually asked it. They said, "Why are you guys doing? Doesn't this hurt your business?" We said, "Absolutely not. This helps us because now more than ever, these organizations need to have a tool like ours." to make sure it's going in the right hands. It is driving business, and if they do get called out on it, They've got the data the right. Somebody starts asking, exactly. why are you spending so much money? Now I've got an answer. If you're a CEO, everything's not tight. even a sports fan, which is right. used to be the case, you know, that, that CEO, she, he or she, you know, they don't want to buy any tickets. Right. And then you got the, the, the person who's a huge sports fan way overdoing it on the tickets. Right. Now there's some accountability. Mm-hmm. Which league do you think is the most advanced in, 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 really in, in their whole ticketing process? Uh, the um, so I would give uh, overall quick answer I would say is the NBA, 
Okay. Uh, I would then also say I give a big shout out to the NFL for the deal they just did with Ticketmaster uh, and the extension there. And Explain really, it. What, what do you sure. Mean? So what? So Ticketmaster and NFL just renewed their partnership really across the league for the most part. That doesn't mean teams can't do change that. and do something else, which a couple have, but it allows them within the ticketing space to have controls around what they call the primary side, but also the secondary side. And secondary is your Seat Geeks and StubHub and so on and so forth. Primary being Ticketmaster and and so, uh, but with that, has they completely crossed out all uh, PDF tickets, right? Which is your, your print at home or e tickets, as they call them, right? Because it's, it's an attachment. I could print out 10 copies and throw them out in the street. And, and then a lot of people have. <laughs> yeah. And that's there's been a big problem. issue. That's yeah. been a big issue. But here's where it's going is this guy right here. And that's where they're making, it's a phased approach. Uh, they've made steps already this year. There's a lot of venues who are going strictly mobile only. Uh, and that's going to be where the Mobile world, meaning you need the app or mobile? I could still have my ticket printed on my phone and then use it. No, you need the app, right? The app. There, there's going to be a point, there's already some venues doing it in which you can't even get a paper ticket. You have to use your mobile device to get in, right? And there, there's a the experience for the fan is so much better because it allows the team to communicate with the fan on site. problem right? is I'm walking around, Troy, right? And, and I'm trying to go to my seat and I got to, first of all, I got to have my phone with me. Second, I got to turn it on. Mm -hmm. Then I got to find the thing. And right. So here, here's where that's actually going to go. So, uh, so there's something that's called near field technology, right? So think about Apple Pay, if you're familiar with that. Yeah, where you go yeah. up, Apple Pay. So that's the, there's what's called Ticketmaster Presence, uh, which is out there. It's a big initiative for Ticketmaster is where they're going, in which the ticket, the barcode is actually going away. Not only are we going mobile, but the barcode itself what's will be gone. In its place? Right? Well, that's the same thing as Apple Pay, right? Okay. So, so with Apple Pay, what's happening? You're not swiping. There's not a barcode, right? It's basically communication between two devices. So when you talk about walking to your seat and you got popcorn here and They're you're going to have drink, this thing right drink, here and, and I, so as I walk in, once you get, be. once I get close enough to you, the usher will say, oh, welcome, Brandon. And you're right in there, right? That's near field technology. Now, what does that do for the teams? It allows them to have a better understanding of where people are going, where they are on site, how on much the venue, they're moving around, how, how, this, how much, not only how much they're spending, but where they're spending. Exactly, it. how much time they're spending in Steiner sport, uh, Sports stores, right? Uh, hopefully, a ton. A ton. One fourteen B, by the way, if you're watching, <laughs> right? Um, but yeah. but imagine that. Yeah, imagine the Yankees, right? Provide that data back to you and say, hey, Brandon, just so you know, here's all the people who are spending time. Now you it, can retarget those folks. It would be nice if I knew every customer that's been to the Steiner. <laughs> over the last eight years yeah. at the stadium yep. and be able to just zap them with a special offer instead yeah. of bothering everybody else. Well, well think about we got to we got to you know we got to ask the Yankees if that. Happens. <laughs> you know they I, have that information. I apologize to the Yankees. Yeah, Brand, they, Brandon's coming. He's they, coming. You, you know they got to have that data though. No, they don't. Not yet. Legends not, does not, it? Not until this happens, wow. right? And so but if you think about it now, look, we're going to take this to the extreme, right? We're going to do pie in the sky. So that person's in the store, right? data polls if they've been there 10 minutes then you say hey you know what during the third inning i want to send that person a specific offer say hey we, we know you spent time in steiner store today if you go now within the next two innings i'll give you 20 percent off whatever it might be now th there's a good chance they saw something yeah. that had interest they decide i'm going to come back later maybe not right now or it's too expensive whatever it might be now that opportunity to remarket back to them while they're on how site how big was right? that going to be for stores and malls and retail stores because they're fighting and scratching yeah. and when they get somebody in their store and not have them buy something. Just like when you go on a website, God help me. I mean, All right. if I go to a website, I mean, I'm seeing that image in my sleep. I'm going no matter what portal I go to. I got that you know those pair of sneakers I looked at you know two months ago. Well, think you know that never leave me. Think about you know Disney. I don't know if you've been to Disney yeah. lately, but they have now the uh, I think they call them the Magic Bands or whatever it might be, and that's. NFC technology in there, right? So they're, for the most part, they're kind of tracking where you're going, what you're doing. They, that's why they know how long lines are. Just like Google Maps when I'm driving, the reason why Google Maps knows how long, because not only is it sending me data, I'm sending data back to it. It knows how my that's miles insane. per hour, right? And so it's the, the communication is going back and forth, which then allows them to share it across the board. And it creates, once again, uh, this convenience. Will this ultimately be, for the fan. I mean, are you, were you ultimately ever going to break this thing down? Back, back to Ticket Manager Please. for a minute. Will you ever break this down for the fan? Because even though maybe I don't have a business, but mm -hmm. I may have season tickets for me and a couple of friends, is it possible to go back and see who I went to the games with and what I end up doing even as a small business or individual? Or? Well, I, well, I think on the small business side, you know, I, is there an appetite to potentially go to the consumer? Uh, 
Potentially, but it would, you know, what's the why, right? We'd have to understand, like, to your point, as a fan, I own the season tickets and I want to know, but why do you want to know? So, you know, I'm dividing right? them up amongst my friends and I forget who I invited. Yep. Like the other day, I, w- I want to invite some friends for the playoff games. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember who I invited yeah, yeah, I'm sure. during the season. And I was thinking, like, I don't want to over invite somebody or yeah. I, I don't want to miss somebody if I haven't invited yeah. them yet. Yep. And I, I'm trying to go back and remember yeah. who the hell I invited There's a technology out there that can help you with that, right. by the way. Uh, but, but, small, but, you know, in all fairness, a company like yeah. ours probably should be using Ticket Manager anyway. Way. Yes, for, uh, we're probably at that point, yep. but it's crazy. It's crazy that how much you can manage. I always say you can't manage, but you can't measure. And it's amazing how many things we still don't measure all that well. Mm-hmm. And it, and I, you know, I think a lot of times what happens is so if you go back to what the reason why we were created is corporations would make all these uh, the purchases and these big big assets, right? And the, like a half million dollars on a suite or fifty thousand dollars on season tickets, whatever it might be, because they knew the impact and the power of entertaining their clients, right? The rapport and the relationships that are built. That is why you have your seats as well, right? And I see you in action, and you're one of the best out there as far as that networking building that rapport. But what happens is for a lot of these organizations that that executive will make that purchase and then they go boop and they drop it on someone's desk and they say, let's get these used, get these out to the salespeople, get these used. And that person who has no experience with allocating assets like that and they say, okay, right? And this is my, they're not, the first thing they're gonna say is, okay, well, what tools do I have to help me manage this. So what do they go? They go to tools that they use for other things and they try to like circumvent this, the process. And so where do they go? They go to Excel spreadsheets and Google Docs and, whatever. and that that does 5% of what they really need to come, but that's all they know and love, right? And, the, and then that's why we were created. And so then when we walk in and they start seeing it, that's, and we'll ask them all the time, magic wand, what do you think? And most of the time when they do the map, our system does 99% of what they know because they don't, they're so limited in their thinking because they've been you know, exposed to these antiquated processes in the past. Uh, and we're just like any other app, every five to six weeks, we update our, our, our apps and our software. We have a roadmap for a year and a half. We know where we're going, what it's all about. So it's exciting times. So you, when, you, when you're following the clients who you've given them different tickets to and everything else, is it also integrated into the literally other uh, other objective data, like how much sales you've done, yep. or how many transactions they've made, depending on the type of company? Yeah, kind of so thing? that's that's what we'll integrate directly to their CRM systems. So like a Salesforce, we have a native integration with Salesforce and Dynamics. We'll, we'll integrate with uh, different analytical tools, like a Domo or a Tableau or a wow. Power BI, so on and so forth. So they can take our data instantaneously, put it within their analytics tools. They can already do analytics off of our tools, but if they want to take a little further, they can go that way. We'll, we'll link up into their other, um, say, HR software, like a Workday or PeopleSoft or whatever it might be. So there's a lot, and that's what our system is all about. Is we're a very open system, so they can connect it to their other systems they're using internally because we're just driving that data. And it's their data to use. So I we'll love it. Connect man. How do people way. get a hold of you? How do they get? How do they get if they want to? So uh, you can look at ticket, ticket, ticketmanager.com. Uh, you know they they can hit me up directly, Troy at ticketmanager.com. Uh, I think the biggest thing, what I love, Brandon, that you guys are doing for entrepreneurs and. You know some of my advice going back to anybody who who's out there, and I, I don't, I'm not sure I can really raise my. Set I think you took a pretty good leap, though. I mean, right in front of my eyes, because you know we work closely yep. together at the Yankees, and that's a big opportunity for you, as well as going to the PGA thing. But yep. to go and do something like this was was rogue to me. Yeah, well, you know, there, I there was, I, I, I got, you know, it was there was a personal decision around it, also that you know my kids were at a certain age that you know I could fail at this job. It may not go well. Right, I still had an opportunity if I had to move them again. Right, uh, I could move them again. But you know, for the entrepreneurs out there, I mean, we say sometimes the difference between uh, folks who are great, you know, good to great, is just taking the one step. Like sometimes that one step is hard, which is saying I'm committed or I'm doing it or I'm going to go for it, whatever it might be. And so you know, my life could be you know. 40 different ways if I didn't t- say that, yes, I'm going to go to Cleveland or yes, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go to the, the Yankees and try something new or I'm going to leave the Yankees, a great organization and go to the PJ Tour and start up something new that they're doing there and then say, you know what, I'm going to go completely hard right turn on my career and I'm going to go into software. I knew nothing about Right, and I knew that going into it, and that's why I want to do. It. I want to learn, I want to absorb, and I want to realize, you know, how do I can expand my career and, and where I wanted to go. So, love it, Troy Tut, Ticket Man.